All right, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are in the right place. This is the uh, What the Football channel. This is the BH and Scrubber show. My name is Scrubber. Hey, Scrub. BH here. Yeah, man, we got a great show for you guys. A great victory. What a game. Um, got so much to talk about. I'm going to go through offense, defense, special teams, talk some coaching. And then we're going to talk about uh, the game against the Raiders. Yeah. Um, so, heck, man, let's get going with offense. Hell let's yeah. talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> let's do cover. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. So, um, man, uh, I mean, Taylor Heineke. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't, you know, he didn't, you know, know, you know, deep bombs no you know wasn't as flashy as before not that he's ever been flashy right. but man he totally just ran that team like a field general yeah did everything he was supposed to do even his interception yeah it was a little close a uh, great play got popped up in the air but you know it wasn't a bad throw you know you got to give your playmakers a you know, a chance to go get the ball in this case it was logan thomas yep. but other than that he was brilliant I mean, he now we talk about him running and we love his running game, man. He ran for his life a couple times this game where he I thought he was going to get dragged down and he broke three free and uh, and got yardage. And in some cases, first down, I mean, he, you know, he really this wasn't an easy game for him. You know what really wasn't. And he did great. He did. He did really good. dude. He didn't take he took one sack. Yeah. So, uh, so the week before, I think he took three for like bad yardage for almost 30 yards and sacks or something like that last week so this week he really cut down on that he broke away he was dumping the ball off his throwing has just continued to get better because one of my chief complaints earlier in the season was the the throws weren't matching the routes that they're supposed to be and now the throws are matching the routes you get the nice rainbow for the long one you get the low and away over the middle you get the sharp shot to the to the tight end you get the leads now the dump outs to the side to the flat look really good i don't think they messed up any of those if i'm not mistaken so no his he did is incredible and you know he's really thinking uh on the run he had one where he did a dump off i think it was terry mclaurin it was kind of a weird play it was like a little screen to terry but a defender broke on him and he had to float it way up in the air it's kind of like holy crap but it worked yeah he floated in terry got up for about 14 15 yards so he's now he's showing he can make things work under pressure uh and uh yeah so one of the best pressure great. throws too i remember was the one he was rolling out he was getting pressure he was rolling out to the right a little bit he was trying to throw and it got blocked and he was throwing it to Antonio Gibson on the side. And even though it got blocked somehow, it squibbed out of there. And Antonio Gibson <laughs> caught it. I mean, the guy blocked his hand pretty good. And still, the throw yeah. floated a little bit, but enough, and it got there. That was amazing to me. So it just shows good concentration on his part. His, uh, but it, The offense has opened up the Seahawks because of the, uh, you know, the, the play, the rpo type thing that he does now now he's a threat see now yeah. he's the one who's rolling out now we're the ones that are putting uh curtis samuel in motion putting deandre carter in motion we weren't doing that earlier in the season i don't even really remember it puts the defense on notice they don't even know what to do about that crap and so heineke is just doing these nice things um executing uh, commandeering yeah. the offense, like you said, but this is all we need him to do is just if it's dink and doink down the field, dink and doink down the field, use what you got. It might be different next week against the Raiders, but for that last game, that worked really, really well. Very happy yeah. with his production. Yep, I am too. And I think, you know, bringing up uh, uh, Curtis Samuel, we can kind of bring up the fact that for the first time, Curtis Samuel and Logan Thomas got in there. Mm -hmm. Curtis Samuel for about 24% of the snaps, but Logan shocked us. I mean, he was in there for over 70% of the snaps. Yeah. yeah. But but it goes to what you're saying. You got this quarterback now who can defensive coordinators have seen the film. Okay. Yeah, he's not 
you know, he, you know, he's not, uh, uh, you know, he's not Kyler Murray, you know, he, he's not, uh, you know, you know, Jalen Hurts, not going to, you know, be killing you, but you still have to watch out for it yes. because if you're not contained and, you know, you do that early in a game, a, a, a called run with Taylor Heineke, it just sets. Now they, now they're already thinking. And now not just DeAndre Carter on jet sweeps, you got Curtis Samuel on jet sweeps yep. and now we can switch them. Yeah. Curtis Samuel on the, out at the Z. DeAndre in the put Curtis Samuel in the backfield. Two guys in the backfield. DeAndre, Car- I mean, you can just start messing with these yeah. guys, and you can start making them, you know, defensively go to different areas, and then start for Heineke to see where he can exploit. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so that was great. So that I just wanted to go with those two guys uh, coming back is so huge, and they seem to come out of it okay. Logan Thomas looked like I don't know what you think, but he yeah. looked great he did he looked fantastic yeah. and and i will say an, an apology to john bates when i was calling the game i i called it for uh yeah. logan thomas and it was john bates so i remember I that when i'm looking at i'm going no that's 87 what the hell so that was a great catch it was for john bates it's great. So. and it's great that he's out there too doing stuff so um but i think you know with offense um you know, having those two guys back, Terry had an okay game, uh, but I think mm-hmm. in general, the offense was very conservative. I think we, we went with what was coming to us. Let me just say this. I want to say really quickly, watch Seattle the two weeks before. Saw both their games. They're in a bit of disarray, um, especially Russell Wilson and Coach Pete. There's something going on there. I think this week that defense – got together and said, look, we can't control what's happening with coach. We can't control what's happening with our prima donna quarterback. We have to take control because Mm -hmm. that defense did not play that way. The two previous games, dude, they were hitting hard. They were blasting. Um, Who's their killer linebacker? Um, Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner was just, was like playing like the all pro he is. I just feel like this game, they put it on themselves and they were tough, man, especially Mm -hmm. against the run. They yeah. were hitting it. They were crushing it. Um, they really were tough. I think they were really, they really came out um, to try and make a statement because I think they knew the season was basically on the brink. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, they, and they played that way. And that's how, that's how desperate teams are. They, they played pretty darn good, yeah. um, but we held up. We did very well. Um, I was just, just proud of everybody. Our, once again, our offensive line, yeah. Great job. I mean, they have been literally five games in a row now just playing like a top five unit. Hell they yes, have, they are. They are doing you, fantastic, dude. Dude, pass Amazing. blocking, run blocking. Yeah. There's no weakness. And then, you know, you look at the injuries. I mean, we look what's happened at center and we still yeah. keep going. Yeah. Um, so, you know what? I mean, you just got to give. I mean, it's like five weeks in a row giving those guys an A, but you just have to do it. I yeah. mean, they've just been that good. Gave, uh, you know, and a lot of those pass plays, Heineke still had plenty of time to wait and to throw. I mean, mm-hmm. they really protected him very well. When did uh, Ishmael come in that game? I forget oh, when my... Schweitzer went out. Like, when still I... in the first half, was it? Um, I think it was because I looked at um, snap counts, and I think uh, Schweitzer was about at 40%, and he was at 60 So that okay. would indicate, indicate to me he played it at the minimum half that game. So, yeah, so. Um, and did well. Look, yeah. I, you didn't even really notice it. Well, you know, um, they asked Taylor Heineke, and Heineke said, well, you saw how well we were running with yeah. Ismael in there. And he said something to the effect of, you know, you know, like he's coached well. He was ready. It wasn't, yeah. a, you know. And he did say, he said, he said, you know, at practice, and this is Heineke, he said, you know, those guys rotate in and out a lot. So I do get a lot of ch- chances to work with them. So I liked yeah. hearing that and that's it sure what, paid off. That, that's a coach Ron thing. We, early, early, early in the year, he said, everybody gets a shot with the ones or the twos. Everybody, yeah. the four string guy gets a shot. How are you supposed to know if you don't get in time with them guys? And another kudo to Heineke, because he, one of the first things he'll say is thanks to the line. He said, they did such a great job. Yep. He, he rarely takes it on himself first, but he yep. always gives it to the line. Now you see some other people like the Seahawks, they blame the line. 
Yeah, I know. You know I what know. I'm saying? You don't yeah. blame the yeah. line. Those are the guys who are protecting you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't piss you got to. You got to love it when your quarterback goes in front of the media and says, yeah, we got to get some guys who can block on this team. <laughs> yeah. Really? I wonder why you, you can't get team. anybody. You keep throwing them under the bus. Exactly. So, man, just looking at what we got. Yeah, we just everyone did so good. But yeah, the gold star. Yeah. The gold star offensive player. You know how much I love Antonio Gibson, but ah. no, nope. The gold star, J.D. McKissick. Yeah. Against his old team. Yeah. Two Two touchdowns. You yep. know that felt good for JD. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What what did JD see? How do you like me now, baby? How do you like me now? Yeah. We hear what the football love, JD McKissick. We do. He's like, how's that DJ Dallas thing working out for you? Dude, <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. god. And and DJ and, and DJ took a hit, and we saw that. And thank God the NFL takes precautions, uh, hits to the head. They're important. Hits to the head and neck. Now, I think it's a concussion situation, mm-hmm. but um, people said he was up and walking around. Uh, he even uh, uh, was out on Twitter, said, hey, I'm good. That's all he said was, I'm good. But I think he is. I don't know if he's technically in concussion protocol, but he, he's kind of questionable with, with an injury. So well, let's see what happens. But yeah. thank goodness after what we saw. But, yeah, he's my gold star offensive player. Uh, two scores and just um, – you know, and I'm just so proud of him. He did such a great job. God, really he always good. does, man. When we need them first downs, remember when they were, they they did like three third and three third and shorts, and we just got stuffed. I think uh, I think Antonio to the left twice got stuffed on third and one, and we didn't get it. And then I think we did uh, JD Patterson to the right on one and got stopped. Yeah, Patterson. Was like, got where just- was McKissick? I mean, why? You know, if it ain't broke, don't. And he wasn't hurt yeah. at that point either. So I was like, man, I even said it during the, yeah, during the, the thing, I was like, what's going on here. So. Yeah. And I think he gives you more options to uh, if you, if it's third and one, you can always fake to him and then he can slide out into the flat. It was like your top receiving dog. Yeah. You know, so I just think so. Well, we'll see. I got some, we'll, we'll talk about that in coaching. Cause I do have some, got some comments and some thoughts on that. Cool. Yeah. Well, so we got uh, it in there. Uh, let's finish up. Um, I think, gosh, I mean, everyone just contributed. Um, you know, there was really no superstars. Like you said, JD gets, I think it's the gold star. He does. Awesome. I mean, Logan Thomas and, and Curtis Samuel coming back and getting through the whole game without an issue. That's gold, man. Yeah. Um, let's talk, though. Let's talk about uh, a couple guys really quick because we're talking about injuries. Um, we've got a real issue at center. Yeah. Um, you know, we got, um, you know, Schweitzer uh, had an ankle issue. And then the, the who was the starter? I forget his Larson. name. Uh, uh, Larson. R- he, he, Rullier? He's got it. He, uh, Rullier has gone for good. Yeah. But Larson. Larson's dinged. So we got two guys dinged up, but mm-hmm. we have Ismail. But now, worst case scenario, what happens if uh, those guys have to be inactive for the game? Well, we have a guy, John Toth that we put on um, the practice squad. He, he was with the team in August. So he knows cool. the nomenclature. He knows the calls. He knows the culture. And they brought him back. Now, this guy's a weird guy. He's been in the league for four years. I don't think he's ever played it down. He's bounced around from teams. Now, he did have injuries when he first started and came into the league, which is kind of unfortunate for him. So, um, But, you know, teams keep looking at him. Um, So he could be a guy that um, let's hope not. Let's hope he just comes on and is active for the game only as our number three um, uh, center. And and we get either um, and we get one of our other guys back. So let's just hope. But, you know, you know, John Toth, um, he he looks pretty good. You know, he was a he was a he was actually in 2017. He was the first team All-American in the SEC. So, okay. you know, we're talking, we're talking Alabama, Auburn, yeah. you know, I mean, he was the number one center in the SEC. So there's something there. He's got, you know, he's got something. So let's just see, hopefully we don't have to use him. Nothing against John Toth. Now, another guy we brought in was Wendell Smallwood. Mm-hmm. That's important. Yeah. Because, and I think they brought in Wendell and we got rid of our boy, the guy we liked William uh, Williams now and Williams kind of a journeyman, but I think what happens, Williams sort of fits the Antonio Gibson mold. He's that ram the ball in, you know, he's a guy you can use on first and second down can catch the ball a little. Well, we've got that now we got Patterson. So Mm -hmm. Patterson, but do we have a third down specialist backup? 
really? Not really. That's where Wendell Smallwood comes in. So they brought, and uh, I remember him, he played with Philadelphia, did quite well. He actually was on the team two years ago when coach Ron first started. I saw a press conference and, and Ron said, yeah, I remember Wendell, a you know, good guy, but it was, you know, by then he had been cut and moved on, but we brought him in. Um, so he could, and coach said, I would, if he had to play, I'd be hundred percent confident in him. He nice. could fill the role. Yeah. He's very, very, very similar to, to, to JD McKissick actually. That's what you want. Exactly. You so I your, think that's the guy to be like that. Yeah. You want, so you want mirror images on your bench to reflect the players you have in the starting lineup. So mm -hmm. I think, so that's kind of it. You know, so we really don't have much to report um, as far as injuries, because we don't know it's only Wednesday, um, but these are just some guys I wanted to touch on because they could actually play a part mm -hmm. uh, coming up. So, um, yeah. and you know, hopefully, man, hopefully Schweitzer's okay. JD McKissick's okay. We have everybody coming back for the Raiders. So, yeah, so far we're on our uh, the injury list. They've just got him as did not participate. They've got a concussion yeah. next to St. Juice too. So, but we'll cover him in the uh, the defense. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so let's go to defense. Okay, that's all. So, yeah, we covered everything on the offense there. I believe. I think cool. so. Yeah, defense. They did. Phenomenal again, as usual. Holy crap. Man, we have such a good team. It's so much fun when you're winning. That defensive line just had had Russ corralled. I think he only got out maybe a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. Usually Russ is four or five times doing that stuff, six, seven to, to 14 or 15 yards. So yeah. we got a we we got away with that. So they're doing good there. We only got burned by Tyler Lockett, that one super gnarly time. And another time that was close, Bobby McCain was all over him. Yeah. I think the the touchdown, the Swain, Jeff Swain, yeah. uh, that was kind of another one of those ones where he kind of let him kind of get away from us. Um, but that's okay. I mean, that's going to happen. Yeah. You don't, yep. you don't, shut, you don't, no one gets shut out anymore. Right. You know, everyone's everyone, even, you know, even the New York Jets can put 24 points up. So, yeah. you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But overall, they kept him corralled. He did do um, he did run up the middle one time and uh, did get a good run. But he got flushed out on another time. And. Uh, Shaka Tony, Shaka Tony, it was. Yeah, he got him. I think he yeah. only gained a yard because, he, you know, Russ thought he was going to break it. Shaka Tony turned, came back. Yeah. Got him from behind and dragged him down, and Shaka Tony sacked him. It was too. Yes. So we oh. got the sack. Yeah, and Shaka Tony only played five plays. Nice. Five plays got a sack and dragged Russ Wilson down. So love Shaka Tony. Um, he's not your traditional tight end in terms of size for our defense. He's more of a a rush guy. You know, he's the guy you're going to put in there on third down. But that's fine. Everyone needs guys like that. He's you know, huge. A little, He's a little, yeah, and he's just super quick. He's great. He's fast. He's quick. Um, so, um, Shaka Tony, we got to give him a thumbs up for only yeah. five plays. He had quite the impact. Well, and, I saw uh, him make the sack, and I was like, who the hell is that? I was, I, you know, because he doesn't get out there very much. I'm like, Shaka Tony, no way. Yeah, fun. so I was happy for him. So, yeah. Um, Everybody thing, contributing. Everyone did good. I would, would like to note now, Every week, Pro Football Focus, our friends on NFL.com, they do a thing called the 90 Club because they rate every player, you know, 45 to 95, how they did. Mm -hmm. And the 90 Club is every player that scored 90 points or above. And you get Cooper Cup, you get, yeah. you know, all these great players. Well, guess what? Two Washington football team players made the 90 plus club. Not surprising, Jonathan Allen. Nice. He's an yeah. animal. Yeah. Yeah. He always does. He should always be on there. But, and this is really nice to see Kyle Fuller got a 91.5 rating. Yep. Kendall Fuller. Yeah. Sorry. That's right. Got a, got, yeah. Got a 91.5 um, played his butt. And we've been saying, man, he has just been getting better mm -hmm. and better and better. He's like a star out there, man. Yeah, he is. He really is. I mean, what a what a great thing to watch him grow in this defense. And so anyway, I just wanted to put that up there, man, because, you know, it's only about 13 or 14 players in the entire NFL that make that 90 plus club. So really? That means that, 
Yeah, they, that's they pretty good there. then. I thought it was they, like you know 40, 50 guys, maybe. No, sweet, oh, that makes it yeah. even better. I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah, cream of the crop. So nice. that's awesome. And you know, and, and all our guys did go. Cameron Curl had a sack, he's a stud, he did great. Um, I want to do a special shout out too, man, to our backup defensive ends. I mean, uh, I think it's Casey uh, Two Hill Hill. and Smith Williams. Smith Williams. Yep. They're they're both doing a great job. Uh, One thing I noticed when I was going through um, snap counts was that guy we talked about last week, um, Daniel Wise. Mm -hmm. Um, Daniel Wise played 42 percent of the snaps. Really? So it's sort of like they're doing a Two Hill, Smith Williams, Daniel Wise triple rotation. Everyone stays fresh. And then on a few of the passing downs, Shaka Tony goes in. Mm-hmm. So they're really utilizing these guys. Great. Let them be rested. And uh, it seems to be working because, yeah. I mean, they, like I said, they really controlled things. They stuffed the hell out of the run. They couldn't run. Yeah. I mean, so um, I'm happy for Daniel Wise. And I, I think, you know, what's funny is, you know, Two Hill, Smith Williams and Cam Curl. We're all drafted in the seventh round. Sweet. And Wise was the year before was undrafted. Man. Nice. Isn't that nice having guys yeah. like that? Those guys are hungry, man. They're, yeah. they're still they're still pissed off they were drafted in the seventh round. Well, it's because so, scouting is all a, a narrative anymore. It, it seems like what it. representative could represent their college guy and shine him as best as you can and clean them up for that college run thing they do on that day. And that's all they go by. And our coach goes and talks to their fucking family. <laughs> Gets to, Wants know, to know what kind of person they are and stuff like yep. that. And that is like a million times more important than their, you know, than their hyper ability. We don't need hyper ability here. Yeah. We, we want, want guys who got decent ability that wants to be here and wants to win. Yeah. So. And that they fit the culture. And, and they're very open to the scheme mm-hmm. and also picked for the scheme. I mean, mm-hmm. they do yeah. look at that. You know, they look at the way they, their size, weight, speed. They look at it, what they played in college. They want guys who fit them schematically. A lot of teams don't, a lot of teams make mistakes that way, by the way. Mm-hmm. Get guys that really don't work for their scheme and they think they can change them. And, and also guys that are open, you know, to how we run things. You know, they, they get that personality thing. You know, they're not some know-it-all, you know, I'm going to do things my way kind of guy. They want guys who are open to it. I mean, look at all those guys, three seventh rounders and one undrafted guy on defense, and they're out there making a, an incredible impact. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So amazing. everyone. I love it. Yeah, and the D, I mean, overall, I'm, I can't think of anyone else except, I mean, except they all did, a, you know, just like on the offense, everyone did their thing. Uh, Cole Holcomb. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Jamin, Jamin Davis is just getting better every week. He's starting yeah. to, he's showing some flashes. You know, he does have some, you know, sometimes because he's not a big, big guy. Uh, he's got to be a lot smarter, a lot quicker. He's got to diagnose a lot faster than he is. But he's a rookie. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, you can't just, you don't get that right away. Yeah. But he shows, he shows some flashes of quick diagnostics and getting in. So he's starting to get it. Uh, Landon Collins, once again, did his uh, thing where he, you know, one of those on the coming round yeah. and getting the running back from behind, just sweeping from the backside. And then, of course, he might have made the play of the game, to be honest, with that punch out fumble. Yeah. I mean, when he came around and punched that ball out from Alex Collins, super veteran heads up play. Yep. Collins on Collins. That was awesome. There was a few times when he tackled him and got him a, a couple times. Yeah, Landon yeah. looks good. I, and so I hope his foot is all right. So yeah, that was kind of, you know, out. yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because it, it happened on the last drive. Yeah. So we're kind of not sure of the severity. Hopefully, if it's an ankle, it's not one of those high ankle sprains it's where we foot. need that guy. Oh, oh, his foot, his foot, yeah, his boy. foot. So maybe, yeah, but that can be. God, you'd almost <sighs> sometimes want an ankle rather than a foot, you know? Yeah, yeah. You can time out an ankle injury depending yeah. on where it is. You you know if it's one week, two weeks, three weeks, five weeks. But with the foot, not yeah. so. So let's let's hope and pray for some good news there. Um, I, I would say the only downside for the defense, um, 
and it is an injury is, is Benjamin St. Juice. And this yeah. is kind of sad on a personal note. Um, he's back in concussion protocol. Yeah. And he's only been playing special teams the last couple of games. Um, he hasn't, he hasn't been part of the DB rotation. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, he has, but he has been playing. He has suited up, but unfortunately I guess somewhere on special teams. So this is pretty worrisome. I, I, I would not be surprised as we get towards Friday once coach sees the other injuries that Benjamin St. Juice just might go on IR for the rest of the season. Mm. So we can designate him as IR, create a space and bring in, you know, depending on the injuries to the centers, you know, to the guards, to other people, you know, he'll want to fill that practice squad and bring people up to the roster appropriately. Yeah. But at this point, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm hoping everything's okay, but three, three concussions in about five or six games. Um, that's bad. Yeah. So, it's probably just a recurring thing, like you said, because he had had, I remember originally he had one and then yeah. like he came back in and then they said it was again. I just thought it was just a continuation. Mm hmm not let him and then this one it said concussion again and i was like man you cannot do that you have to you know unless it's a lingering thing and he didn't take a shot and it's just a lingering right. thing so but still you can if you got two i think we talked about this the last time if you've got we two within like three or four weeks or something you should just call it for the year i don't give a shit who it is you, you can't have it be that close together your brain can't can't tolerate it it needs to heal it takes a bruising it takes a beating like any other part of your body and, and worse so yeah so, let so that's have why the time off yeah that's why i'm saying um let's see what happens um i really do think it's coming down uh the, you know that'll give them uh it'll be great for st jude's to go get well yeah and and then we can kind of adjust the squad so that's kind of the only downside uh, there, I'm um, so hope this young man takes gets you know taken care yeah. of, and then he can come back next year. Yeah. Strong, yeah, that great get, defense we got, dude. Yep, killing it, dude. I don't know, Holcomb did good. Let's see. Oh, uh, Cameron Curl got a sack. Yep, his name was in there a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, it's just amazing. And what I really like, uh, two before, like you were saying, they were rotating the three guys. The other thing is on the offense, they're rotating the linemen a little bit too, giving the front line some rest every now and then. And then also because of our offense doing so well on our drives, which we hadn't been doing early in the season, now our defense is rested. I know. All the time. And if you're rotating the, the people, we're rotating them all the time, showing these different packages. Everybody gets time out. Everybody gets to play. Everybody – it it's just it, – it just seems to be like a nice peanut butter spread just across everybody so that the whole team has a chunk and everybody is giving and, and supporting the team. Everybody is in, not just one guy making 150 yards and carrying the team across the line. I don't want that in my team. I want my whole team. I want, I want 11 guys doing one thing and that's what we have now. And it's exciting. It is. It's fun. great to watch. Yeah. And, you know, and I tell you, the proof in the pudding, man, is uh, this guy Ismael mm -hmm. coming in. The number four, the four string center comes in and we just were still running and kicking ass. Yeah. There was no there was no big deal. He just Amazing. came in and did it. Yeah. I got to give props to that guy, man. And, yeah. and the cool, you know, it was really cool. Here's a little side note. Ismael's uh, dad hadn't been able to see his son play or do anything much or even go to one of his son's games uh, mm. because of COVID, you know, he's being careful, but you know, now he, so, so he goes out to the DC and gets a ticket and he's in the stands and lo and behold, his son plays. Nice. So, yeah. So that was, that was a real heartwarming nice. thing, man. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you don't want to see injuries, but you know, dad right. got to see his son play, get a victory. Yeah. So that was cool. So yeah, this male did well, such a good job. Didn't even notice it. it. Didn't even notice anything went wrong. Yep. Speaking well, of things man, going wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, oh my gosh. Let's go to you know, special we, teams. We every week we get <laughs> we get special teams and A plus. <laughs> and then and then we're we're both going, why are we even talking about special teams? Because mm. there's you know, they're awesome. Yeah. Forget about special. Well, okay. 
Joey Sly, uh, we saw the hamstring. Yeah. Uh, we saw Doing. him like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh Running down God. the field. And then he did like, like he was pooping his pants or something. <laughs> I had to sit down real quick. He grabbing uh, his hands. Ah! That'll oh, teach you to get on the bicycle more, dog. Get out there and yeah. run some sprints some more. And he was, uh. he wouldn't. He was never going to catch that guy. Oh. In a million years, he wouldn't have. Hell, the other guys on the team couldn't catch him. So, God bless Joey. When he was here, he did good. Put he us did. in a, he did but, great you know, it, it put, put us in a bad situation. It did. I mean, let's face it. You know, we're, we're like, oh, crap. Well, our punter can kick. Okay. And then they go, okay, well, wait, our punter is the holder. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can get someone to hold. Yeah. We got that guy. Oh, but wait. Wait. You got to be able to hold the, it. Poor, uh, he'll, he'll kick from the left, a left footer. <laughs> yeah, no, none of that was going to work. No, yeah. none of it. And they're going, Hey, didn't you, didn't you use the hole for left footed kicker in yeah, high school? Yeah, back in and, right. When yeah. you were in pop and they're corner. going, No, they go, No, coach, I never yeah, did that. No, I'm not <laughs> getting that, my hand down there. You're that crazy. That never happened. That never happened. Yeah. So, man, we had to go for it on fourth down, and it, it just affected. It affected play calling. It was like the game within the game. Like, yeah. oh, even the announcers were going, holy crap, what are they going to do? That was So fun. anyway, it was. And, you know, we came, you know, we came through. We fought through it. Um, but it was tough. Um, that one was a fourth and four. And we yep. could have tried that field goal, but we couldn't. So they went for it on fourth and four. And I think he hit DeAndre Carter. going. DeAndre Carter, beautiful yeah. play. DeAndre Carter, such a stud on third and fourth down. I think we left him out of the offense. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> He's well, like our main dude. We love DeAndre Carter here too. So We do. Well, and I have to tell you, man, I hate doing this, man. But, and I'm going to tell you why. I got to give the special teams a D. Yeah. And I'll. And I'll tell you why it was those two onside kicks. Yep. Whoa. What the heck was that? Yep. Bad. Not good. The good news is it didn't cost us a victory, but holy shit. I hope they were practicing onside kicks this week because mm -hmm. they really didn't seem to have a system down. They didn't seem to really have a philosophy of handling these things. So yep. the good news is we got away with it. It was like a you know, mirror image. The second one was like a mirror image of the first one. I thought because they were showing the first one so many times when I saw the second one, I thought it was the same one for a second there. Yeah. And God bless Adam. <laughs> hum we love Adam Humphreys, but yeah, thank God. You, know, you think that ball was, you know, <sighs> was kryptonite the way he kind of <laughs> like, dude, just grab the freaking football, man. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, you know, and you know, we, we, they've been a plus all the way. Yeah. But you know what? Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone has yeah. problems. We'll give them their D. They'll take it like men. Yeah. They'll work on it and they'll come back next week. Now, next week, Brian Johnson's our new kicker. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we got Brian Johnson's a rookie, did a little bit of research and he did some filling in. I think he was with the bears. He did some kicking. And then when Will Lutz um, from uh, the Saints, Saints went out, Saints brought this guy in. Now he's a rookie. Uh, Saints could have got a lot of other guys, perhaps. Chris Blewett was available, but they didn't. So they went with this guy. He did really good. He actually had a couple of glitches on uh, extra points, mm -hmm. which could be a little worrisome. But he's a young guy. He's just a rookie. But he, he's got NFL experience. They brought him in. Um, and we talk, I think I told you this earlier. Here's kind of a, a funny aside. Um, Joey Sly's from Virginia Tech, too. Yes. When Joey Sly left and went to the pros, this kid, Brian Johnson, was the next Virginia Tech kicker. <laughs> so, Very good. <laughs> that's pretty weird. That's cool. Um, it is. And he, um, he actually went to high school in D.C. Um, so he's a local kid. I mean, nice. he went to yeah, he went to high school in D.C., college in Virginia. So he's a local guy. So he's our guy now. So um, I think um, let's just assume he'll just slide right in and do his job and know what he has to do. We'll be excited uh, being in front of a, the home crowd, being at home. Well, the home team, let's put it that way. Home team. That's right. Yeah. So well, other than be that, excited to be with, you know, we've got a functioning machine as far as Cheeseman and uh, Tress Way is concerned. So yep. he should just be able to step right in there 
as long as that function of the whole thing is going, he should just count his step to what they do and be able, I, I don't have any problems with that. So uh, the other deke on, uh, because they get a, a D grade on special teams, and I hate to do it too, is DeAndre Carter. The he first time. It like a couple times too. One yeah. bounced right off his chest and came out and got recovered, but a couple other ones too, he kind of was like, but I think that's the way, what's his name? Punts too. That, that Dickerson, Dickinson, Dickerson, whatever his Dixon for the Seahawks, the way that ball comes down, just he's such a special punter. I think it just threw DeAndre because DeAndre's not likely to drop it or anything. That one hit no. right in the chest. I know. So, is he a is he a left footed punter? Uh, no, I think he's a righty, but he's a righty. He's, uh, but he's he's Australian, and and so he's used uh. to kicking on the run, and he knows how to make the ball so when he kicks and he knows it's going to be inside the 10 he kicks it in a certain way so when it hits it bounces like back or up it doesn't keep going he knows oh. how to do that he is good at that he knows exactly what he's doing yeah so if he can kick that way to have it bounce like that and come back i think when uh, uh, they're used to it probably it coming end over end or something but it's probably coming straight down like a missile which is probably hard for him to see, you know, if it's just coming, a point is coming at you rather than this thing coming at you. It's probably harder to watch and, and yeah. catch. And so yeah, Dixon, he's Dixon's the one, the double punt one. Yeah. He's a double punt guy. He's just amazing. So, uh, well, you know what, if, if he played, um, there was a great uh, San Diego charger punter. Um, gosh, Darren something, you know, he was the first guy. I mean, he might have been the very first guy that really used that um, backward spin kick drop. I forget his name. But also, Australian rules kickers, they run down the field, and they, they can actually, while they're running, stop and kick into the goalpost. Mm -hmm. And if they're off to the side, they kick it side so it spins in. Mm -hmm. They manipulate the ball. We don't do that. But they do. So, you know, if yeah. he's putting a slight manipulation where the ball is up and it's curving, well, no, no returner ever sees that. Right. Right. Yeah. You just yeah. like you said, you just see the end over end and it comes to you. So mm -hmm. if it's got a little bit of this because something happened because DeAndre Carter is like solid gold, man, the guy never yeah. bobbles anything yeah. or makes a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was weird. That, that was says a lot strange. about what you're punter can do you know our boy trust way is really good in the way he can do it as well I, I don't know what his his uh stats were this but i don't think we had anything wrong with his punting no trust did good trust has yeah. been about as 100 percent as you can be and he's our holder he, no problems yep. there so. yep yeah he gets it inside the 20 a lot um if you're backed up he knows how to boom a 60 yarder so yep. Yeah. So anyway, I've um, got some things, got, got some things to work on, but luckily it didn't cost us the game, but it was, it really was a challenge. So we're gonna have to think about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, let's get some guys out there practicing, you know, let's get, um, let's get some guys, somebody, a wide receiver, you know, who knows, you know, some, you know, someone on that team was a holder in high school. Could yeah. be Adam Humphreys, someone like that. So yeah, I, I was a, you know, I held. You know, I was a quarterback in high school, but I, I held him. So, okay, well, you can practice from the left side and do about 20 with Tre – let, let Tress kick some, you know, some, you know, 22-yard field goals, and you practice holding them. Yeah. You know, it, showed, it just showed a little bit of a hole that we need to fix. Yeah. Can't, I, think can't they had it, I think they had it set up last year because of COVID. I think kickers traveled with them. I remember Ron saying that earlier this year in one of his interviews. Was, yeah, last year we had guys – I think we even – we put a couple people on the, we talked about this earlier in the year, they were riding the bus with the team when we had uh, uh, Hopkins, who, by the way, I think is still doing good in San Diego. So yeah, yeah. The Hopkins, good for him. Good old, so, yeah. Yeah. So having a but second need, guy. Yeah. But they need to kind of like, we can't have that situation again because no. if, yeah, if, if, you know, Tress is going to have to work a little, you know, work a little bit just, just in case. And, uh, but it's good. So another one of those things where, you know, we just dodged a bullet. It, yeah. We didn't lose, but let's go ahead and fix it. Let's fix those um, onside kicks. Let's yeah. work on that. I'm sure a special teams coach is out there. So, yeah, um, I think it's another perseverance thing for this team. They have seen this thing step up. Oh my God, we lost our kicker, but 
These guys are so used to just working through the crap so often, you know, that they just something like that. I don't think throws them anymore. Fuck it. No, no kicker. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Got to go for it on fourth down instead of kicking the field goal. Fuck it. You know, yeah. I th- I think them guys look for, I think, you know, the linemen and the offense probably love that. You know, that's kind of what people want in the NFL is to get rid of field goals and make them go on four. So yeah, I know you know, and a lot of people are doing it. Well, I did see that there was a there was a play and I think it was an incomplete or a run that got about two yards on second down. It was third down. They were inside the 30 or 40. And uh, Ron was looking at a Heineke and gave him two. He was saying just, yeah, two plays. You got two plays to get it because, you know, he's like saying we're not kicking. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, you're going to get third down and fourth down to get a first down. You know, that's Heineke. what he was telling him. And Heineke went, okay. Um, Peace to you too, bro. Peace, Thanks, man. Coach. Thanks, coach. <laughs> Peace, man. I got to play. <laughs> yeah. What oh, do I do coach. on fourth down? Yeah. Oh, my Very God. good. Well, good challenge the, for the boys. Speaking of the coach. Yeah. Um, yeah, our special teams coach. Well, we might have to give him a C minus, but uh, he's been so good all year. We're not, gonna, we're not going to get down on him too bad. No, I'm going to write this down. Kazor, you know, he's going to improve. Um, you know, I mean, I, I'm going to give, you know, coach gets a B, B plus because um, he had to work through a lot of those things. He did a great mm-hmm. job coaching. Uh, North Turner, this is what I was talking about earlier. I was a little, uh, I'm split on this. On I those know. third and ones, yeah. running the ball, running the ball. Yeah, I'm giving, him, I'm giving him a C plus because, man, a little more creativity would have been nice. I mean, you know, that's why you run the ball so much, because then you can do a play action. You can do a fake and just get a quick three yard pass to Logan Thomas first down, man. You know, yeah, so Katie I just McKissick, want, the first yeah. down fiend. Yeah, they and they but they just kept running it and running it. Like, it was just like and, and, and really, I mean, to be honest, man, I mean, like I said earlier, they came to play, and on those runs, those guys got stuffed. I mean, even JD, I don't know. They, it was so obvious they were stacking the box. Like, why the heck didn't we do a little dump off, a little play action? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I was a little, yeah, but I got it. But you know, I can never get too far down on coach. And I'll tell you why. You make a team run the ball on third and one, third and one, fourth and two, third and three. They start to get used to it. You know, you got a lot of teams, they just give up and they throw. And then when you ask them on third and one at the 50 to go, okay, we're going to run and they get the play. They're like, oh, wow. Their, their little buttholes pucker up. Yeah. Cause they're like, oh shit, we never run on third and one. And the, you know what I mean? But our team is like third and two, fourth and two, we're going to run it. And they go break the huddle and they get right down and they block. So it's not, so I'm going to give coach a little leeway. Cause I know that's what he's trying to instill in these guys that, don't think just because you didn't get a first down on third and one that I'm not going to call running on third and one. So you linemen better open up a hole and you line and you running backs just better be ready to hit it because I'm going to yeah. call it. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I sort of get the philosophy, but boy, it was a little frustrating because yeah. a couple of first downs there would have made a difference. And then we did have a third and one. I think it was when Antonio Gibson went around the end and Brandon Scherf got called on it what I thought was a pretty cheesy holding call. Oh, I remember that. Oh, that was brutal. That was brutal. That was such a great run. Now that was, was. one where coach did a, a cool little play and it, it didn't go right into the line. And Tony went up and around. Um, but anyway, um, all the way around, I got to give coach uh, Del Rio a B plus because he's holding this team together. I mean, uh, the rotation I love. I love the fact that um, we've got all these no-name guys at defensive end when our two super stud stars are out, and they're just filling in. They're oh, doing yeah. their job, man, and they're not – you know, they're just doing great. What can I say, man? They're, yeah. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, all the way around, coaching was pretty good. It was a tough game um, from their defense, not from their offense, but I think their de- – Yeah, their defense played way harder, wanted it more than their offense did. So Way more, way more. Yeah. yeah, they 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 we know we talked about that. They got problems there in Seattle. Myself. Yeah, and one more so, coach we got to cover. Yes, our good boy uh, in the chat from the game was talking about uh, what's his name, Matsko. He's our offensive oh, line coach. So they say stud. he's a real 
good coach, life coach, football coach, a guy who cares about the players. And so you can see that shines. It comes through. Them guys want to play. They want to block for Heineke. Uh, he's been moving them around. He keeps them fresh and rotated too. So shout out to Coach Matsko. Yeah, you got to give Matsko. I mean, if your fourth, if your fourth string center just rolls out in the middle of a Monday night football game, like it was nothing, that's coaching. That's not luck. Yep. Yeah. You know, this, this is guy, a whole team in a nutshell, dude. That is a, this whole team in a nutshell. All you yep. do as a player is you sharpen your skills, you hone your body, you do the things you need to do, and then the coach will plug you into the scheme. Yep. And that's how it that's works. It. Not the and other you, way around. Not like a Russell Wilson who wants to put his two cents worth into how things are coached or how the scheme goes. No. Like the actor in a movie doesn't get to tell you how to write the scene. The scene has been written. You yep. just act. <laughs> You know, the play has been called. You just quarterback is all. And we don't we don't have those people on our team. Thank God. I, that's why I love this team. No, we got nobody on our team that is any kind of a diva. Not even close. Yeah. And they buy in instead of trying to instead of fighting yeah. against it. Yes. They're they're buying in 100 percent and they're going with what the coach says and they understand that this is what we're going to do. And then it's a weekly thing. Mm -hmm. When they watch film, like we're going to watch film against the Raiders. Yeah. They're going to go, coach, what do we do? They're going to say, well, we're going to tell you. This is what the Raiders do. This is how they set things up. It's kind of the defense play. This is the scheme. We're going to go against these guys. This is what we feel can work best. Cool. And they buy in. They yeah. buy in. Yeah. What do I do? Fuck, what, yeah. do you, what do you want me to do? How are we going to approach this? Every player, every defensive lineman. And if it's not, if you're hurt and your guy who comes in, he knows what the scheme is. He knows what they're trying to do. You don't have to teach him. You don't have to explain mm -hmm. it to him. You don't have to remind him. He comes in, he knows what he has to do. So, yeah. yeah. And that's Coach, the hard that, part about having people that are these divas are once that person is lost, now you're screwed because yep. you heap so much on that person that when they can't perform to the level that they're supposed to perform, it just undoes everything around them. And so yep. we don't have that. Once one of our guys go down, you're just, oh, yeah, that dude's in. You know, yep. popcorn guys after him, he can fucking yeah. do it too. Yeah. So, because they've yeah. been coached properly, they've been trained properly. Yeah. They, they've all watched film. Everyone's included when they're watching film. It's, it's like everyone in the room watching film. It's as if they're going to play, even though they know they might even be inactive. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. They, they study film as if they're going to play the game. And that's where Ismael. You know, damn well, he studied film like he was going to play because he was ready. He was. You know? Yeah, that wasn't a miracle. So speaking of those filthy Raiders, man. Yeah. So the Raiders. So they screwed another city and then moved to Las Vegas. Believe me, in 10 years, they'll want a new eight billion dollar stadium and they'll <laughs> go to they'll go to Oklahoma City. They'll be the Oklahoma City Raiders because, you know, that's just how they are. They don't give a shit. Oakland, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. It's yeah. The Nome, Nome, Alaska Raiders, whatever. Um, anyway, um, you know, I got to say um, Raiders are looking pretty decent. Not mm -hmm. a dynamic team, not a great team, but um, overall I've been watching the last few weeks. They're actually playing fairly solid after all the BS with the coach and the, the unfortunate situation with their wide receiver and that horrible DUI crash. Um, that's 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 got to rock any organization to its yes. core. Oh my I don't God. care who you are. Yeah. Um, and they, they seem to have come out of it pretty good. Um, I, I think um, in some ways um, they're similar to the Washington football team. I don't see them doing anything great. They do a lot of things good. They seem to play as a team. I'll give them that much. Uh, Derek Carr leads the league in yardage. Guy can averaging over 300 yards passing a game. Um, so that's a guy who can uh, get the ball downfield. They like moving it. Got a good running back, uh, yeah. Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs yeah. pretty good. So, yeah, overall, I got some, a couple of good pass rushers, some solid DBs. So this is, this is overall a solid team. We can't really look to any specifics to where, oh, their DBs suck or they've got mm. problems with their O-line. They're, they're pretty solid. Um, ha having said that, the one thing that might be a negative for them is their stud tight end, Darren Waller. Yeah. Um, is, is looking doubtful. 
Uh, they got Fabian Moreau is a pretty good tight end. He could still go in there and do damage. Uh, but uh, that would that is uh, a guy, uh, Wall, that they really depend on. Super good wide. You know, he actually goes out and plays wide receiver, too. I know. They use him to match up guys and really get you in trouble. So he may not play. So we'll see what happens there. That would uh, sort of be a boon to us um, not to have to worry about that guy because um, they don't have any real super – star wide receivers you know someone that you know i mean they got Deshaun jackson he can burn you deep and they've got uh edwards and you know a few mm-hmm. others um i think the one guy is there um they do have a pretty good slot receiver um renfro who, oh um, yeah yeah he had, he had a great game so let's you know let's i think that's a guy for sure and during game film and during practice they're they, they're going to want to watch hunter renfro so we're not going to let this guy be running doing crossing routes all day and get nine catches for 100 yards like he did last week mm-hmm. so he's just one a, of them dudes that's one of them hyper aware guys like the andre yeah. carter like cooper cop uh, like all these uh, like jd mckissick just like hyper aware of the whole field at all times and skilled at every level of catching the ball uh yards after the catch yards after contact all that stuff. Them guys are, it's amazing to watch guys like him. So he, yeah. he's their punt returner too, isn't he? I think he is. Yeah. 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 He's really good. He's really solid guy. So, and he had a great career. I think he played for Florida, Florida state. I forget which one. And he was just super dynamic there too. Mm-hmm. So that's a guy we have to worry about, but overall, yeah, I think the guy, you know, Derek Carr um, would be the guy we're going to focus on. Um, I think our we've shown we can stop the run. I, I don't see their running backs or O-line being able to um, really um, get things going against us. Mm-hmm. I really think they're – I mean, they're good. Don't get me wrong. But I think they're going to really force Carr. Now, the thing is, um, that's a two-edged sword because Carr likes to sling the ball. Like I say, he has more yardage than anybody. So mm-hmm. he's a guy who could get on a roll. So be prepared for it because I really think we can stop their run game or at least keep it under wraps. So get ready for some Derek Carr. He's going to have to start slinging the rock. And uh, so we have our DBs and our linebackers have to be ready for all of that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, um, I we're think, ready for it. Yeah, I think we can run the ball on him. Um, they got some guys. I think one thing is you don't want to get into a lot of passing. Uh, uh, they've got that guy. Oh, I can't ever say his name. In, in Doc Way, I think he, uh, he started out in. Jacksonville went to the Ravens. He's just kind of a pass for a specialist. Not very good against the run. He's the kind of guy you want to run at. When when he's in the game, go after him. And on the other side, gosh, I can't remember there. They do have a killer defensive end. Um, can't remember his name. White guy. Um, just a stud. He was actually like a fourth or fifth round pick. Um, but if you start passing, they will start Crosby. Coming. Crosby. Thank you, Max Crosby. Yeah, I had they that will... one neuron in my brain. Saw the <laughs> last, other one, and they last connected. One. Yeah, don't do another bong hit, man. Because you'll lose it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but when you said some white dude, I was like, I had this picture of my think He's like number ninety-eight, and I had this because the last game I watched, I remember he came in the picture at one point yeah. and like took up the whole picture. I was like, damn. Yeah, he's a stud, man. And yeah. so if you get into a situation where you're having to pass. Um, with him and, and Doc Way, uh, you're going to be in trouble because they do love to rush and they will make your life a living hell. Hell yeah. So, but what we do is we run the ball good and I think we're going to run the ball and you want to run the ball at those pass rushers and it wears them down and then they're not the same guys in the third quarter. Um, so I kind of see a lot of, I mean, that's just the way we do things. We run the ball, we establish the run and um, I think we can run on those Raiders and then make he passes when we need to. So, yeah, I think it's a road victory, man. That's what I see. Yeah, I don't see why not. Rolling into Vegas, uh, our guys are just, we, me and BH talk about this, uh, just for us to, from the very beginning, to watch this arc and watch it finally catch fire and, and to have the things that we've been saying all this time validated and come to fruition now and it's been exciting even them games we were losing to uh, them last couple like the denver one and uh and green, bay. green bay and the chiefs we were doing good we were building through that those were losses who gives a fuck we were building through all, all those numbers are closed we didn't lose bad in them games we didn't lose no. bad at all we were just stepping on our dicks the whole time so we were fucking that up, but everything else was good. And then we jumped that bye week and then boom, 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 three games down the line. 
you know, a blind person not knowing anything about football could see how well these guys are doing now. Yep. And so we've come to this other game here now on the Raiders. And like you said, car does produce, 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 produce. But, uh, you know, we got ways of shutting that down. Again, yep. we talk about put the squeeze on the line, keep it tight in the, in the defensive back situation and just squeeze, squeeze, just hold it in. And without Waller, he's going to be screwed. So he's not a mobile quarterback. Will he run? He'll run. He's okay. kind of, I think he's got the same kind of, uh, I think he can, he's kind of like Heineke. He can put that kind of hurt on you. He, he's smart. He runs when he has to, he can get out of trouble. So I would say similar. Right. So he's he, not yeah, looking gotta, to run, but can right. run if he has to, whereas a Cam he, Newton is looking to run. Exactly. So right. he's kind okay. of similar. He can hurt. He's not, you know, not like Daniel Jones hurt us, but he can get out there. Cool. Um, I will say one thing, speaking of tight ends, let's keep an eye on this. The Raiders are like the second worst team in the league against tight ends. Oh, good. They're terrible. And I will say, um, I read a lot of matchup stuff, especially for fantasy, you know, match up here, how these guys match up and never always ends up the way you think. You're like, holy crap, I played this receiver and these guys are 28th in the league against receivers. And he never, he got two catches and it just frustrates the hell out of you. But one thing I have seen um, is tight end matchups are pretty darn good and a pretty darn indicator of how a guy will play. Okay. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with tight ends is, do you have a good safety? Are your linebackers mobile and quick? Because if they're not, you're going to have a hard time in teams. Will go. So um, let's look at that. Logan Thomas could be a great weapon. Got a team that has a hard time covering tight ends. Um, that's going to be great for tight, you know, for Heineke. So let's, let's keep an eye on that. That's, that's a good thing to know and to yeah. take advantage of. Yeah, we can really hurt them and then, you know, use, um, use Logan Thomas, kind of going to Logan Thomas, Logan Thomas, and, then you run Logan Thomas out, and DeAndre Carter goes long, and baby's wide open. Yeah, so, John Bates will be in there. John Bates is growing by leaps and bounds, so I really awesome. like watching him out there. He doesn't look as clumsy as he was even like two day, two games ago. He no, no, really he really sharp smooth. out there. Yeah, he's really is. He's starting to find his way, and um, and I think um, you know, we've got um, oh, what's his name? Who's our uh, Seals Jones. Uh, Ricky Seals Jones is questionable, but I mean, if we had Ricky Seals Jones, Logan Thomas, and John Bates suited yeah. up, wow. Yeah. You, you talk about some, and these guys are badass and love to block. Yeah. You know, especially Bates and Logan Thomas, man. You get them out there in a double tight end set. Team, you know, the Raiders won't know what to do because yeah. we'll be able to run right over them. And our fourth yeah. string is Sam is Reyes. Look out. <laughs> exactly, man. So, so um, yeah, very, very good. So uh, I think they can pull it off. I'm excited. Now you're going to be doing the live stream for the game, right? I am. Yes. That's going to be that, fun. That's going to be Sunday. And it's a different time, at least for us here on the West coast. It's one o'clock on the West coast. I'm assuming that's four o'clock on the East coast. You all know when yeah. to tune into the football game, right? Okay. Yep. To show that's up here it. on this channel at like 15 minutes before the game starts. That's when uh, we come on. BH yep. will be in the chat, holding it down, giving us the last minute information we need, plus cheering us on in the uh, during the game. He'll be in there. Hopefully, we'll see all our chat people back again. That yeah, was it was fun. a lot of fun. It really was fun. So I'm not getting the game, but I'll be able to. To check, I hope they change. I hope there's a last minute schedule change. That's what we'll I was see. hoping for. Because they, you know, what's so weird. They uh, they flexed the 49ers and the Seahawks for that Sunday night game. So they put the Chiefs versus the Broncos, and I'm like, well, what's the fucking difference? Yeah, you're gonna show the the Seahawks and the 49ers anyways. All you did was switch them. Both yeah, of those I games get, were going to be shown at their times, and all they did was switch them. Who? Why would you do that? If you're going to switch it and put San Francisco at that 1 o'clock game, then you want to change the game and put the right. Washington football team versus the Raiders on. That's the more important. Look how slow the mainstream media is catching up to the Washington football team. They're clueless. They're clueless about it. Absolutely. They keep all saying the same thing. Derek Carr leads the league in yardage and the Washington football team has the worst pass defense in the league. 
that's why I'm picking the, the Raiders. Uh, I saw a thing with eight, eight people picked the game, seven picked the Raiders and only one Good. for the Washington football team. I yeah. love it. But the one guy who picked the Washington football team, Daniel Jeremiah, mm-hmm. Good guy, super smart guy. I was actually was a personnel guy with the Baltimore Ravens years ago. He's the only one to pick the Washington football team because he's a thinking, smart dude. Yeah. He's like w- one of the few people out there who doesn't go along, you know, Very I mean, good. With the narrative. Yeah. So that's good to know because he's not an idiot. Um, so, um, but yeah, but to your point, yeah, let everyone pick the Raiders. That's fine. Yeah, screw uh, them. Here I'm, we I'm, come. I'm, yeah, they can cry when the game's over, just like uh, the other last three teams did. Yeah. And not yeah. to get too far ahead, too, but uh, just as the heads up, after this Raiders game, we start on our five-game division run, scorched earth, leave no survivors on the field, yep. run to the to the end of the season. So yep. keep that in mind, folks. Watch uh, Thursday night is going to be a good game. Should be the Saints against the Cowboys, and we would just love to see the Saints put the, you know, the the stake in the Cowboys' hearts too. Oh, that would be awesome! It would yeah. be good for our team, like you said, yeah. knowing that the Dallas Cowboys lost. Now going to Vegas, you have more to play for. Fuck yeah! You can really dude. feel it, yeah. And hopefully, uh, Taysom Hill's going to start, so have some some stability at quarterback. Word is Alvin Kamara could be back. If that's the case, I think they'll give Dallas a run for their money. Yeah, who were they starting Ripian before? No, I think they had uh Trevor Simeon. He was old oh, Simeon. Bronco. That's right. Yeah, Trevor. He's some you know, old he's, Bronco quarterback. Yeah, he's just uh just a fill-in kind of he had a kind of a good game when he first came out, but then he's kind of been trashed since. Okay. Uh yeah, but they'll they'll be able to um I think with I think the team will be excited and energized if Taysom Hill and Alvin Kamara can be out there. Yeah. So yeah. And the Cowboys all. are getting beat up, they look sloppy. Yeah, their people are slowed down. Kamara or Cooper, uh, um, Amari Cooper. Yeah, Amari Cooper. He might not even make it back. He had a right. he had kind of a bad uh, reaction to the COVID. Yeah. So he's he's been coughing and his lungs still aren't up to speed. And uh, CD Lamb was. I think CD Lamb will be back, but he's been fighting slowed some down. Injuries. I would imagine you don't come back hundred yeah. percent after something like that. Zeke's knee is hurting him. He hasn't been doing shit. Yeah, I'm more afraid getting- of. Pollard, Pollard's yeah. a better running back than Zeke. And actually, Pollard's been a better running back than Zeke for almost the last year. I'm yeah. telling you, man. Zeke just, man, I don't and see it. And their front line is a sieve. Yeah, so. they 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 went from being the greatest front line to okay. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta look for that Thursday night game, folks. That'll get you excited for the Sunday game. Come and watch it Sunday with us. We love to scream and yell. And, yep. uh, to, you know, hopefully we won't need the group hug. I don't like pulling out the group hug at the end. It works. Sometimes you have to. The last yeah. two games, it worked. It worked. So, all right, brother. <laughs> Thanks, man. What a great right, show. Man. Good show, man. Good time. So, I'll see you on Sunday. I'll be there early in the chat room. Hey, man, let me ask you real quick. What the hell? I was messed up with the time on that game. Did it start earlier? Five like 10, 5 15. I must have been. I, I kept going for no, I think it started at uh 5 15 and I was ready for 5 20. Okay, I got caught. I got caught short. Well, I'll be there early on Sunday. Yeah, I'll get I'll get the inactives and the pregame rumors and stuff out there and then we'll just hit it hard. Yeah, I'll be there about 15 minutes before the game. Y'all just jump on in there. Let's okay, man. Y'all. All right, thanks. See you, man. Good show. All right.